Good morning. Welcome to the Concord Baptist Church Bible Study. We're so excited to have you with us. God is with us. Emmanuel. Come on in. Thank you so much. Tell your neighbors and your friends that it's Bible study time again. It is 1130. Amen. On Wednesday, December the 9th, 2020. Again, this wonderful last month of our year. Good morning, Miss Gregory. Good morning, Minister Ellis. Good morning, Brother Chapel. And again, we thank you. Oh, God is still good in the midst of it all. I found out that God's word, amen, is truly a light a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Oh, his word. Thank you so much. Good morning, Miss Davis. Miss um, Lamunda, God bless you. Uh, Miss Bridges, good morning. Good morning, Miss McCann. Miss Keisha, Miss Edwards. Brother Eddie, what's up, cuz? Love you, man. Miss Stevenson, oh, it's Bible study time. Oh, sometime in the midst of the storm. We got to get in the word. We're in the word today. I know, I know some of y'all already done heard. Amen. But I, I Mars Day said, Hey, have you heard? Ah! Bible study time. Good morning, Shop Man Bonner, trustee. My friend, Miss Smith, Miss Ethel Scott. Good morning, Miss Young, all the way in Cleveland. Oh, hi. Oh, by way of Gaffney. South Carolina. Amen. Nothing could be finer than being in Carolina. And even though you're in different states and different cities, we're all together today. Good morning, Miss Wittenberg. Uh, Dot. But Travis Smith, my friend and brother. God bless you, Miss Tanner, Miss Peggy, Miss Coleman, Linda Fay Lou. Amen. Uh, Miss uh, uh, Aquila and Arilla. Good Lord of mine. Right there together this morning. Miss Thomas, Miss Greg, thank you from Winston Salem. Thank you for joining us. Miss Miss Norris and Miss Davidson. Somebody say it's Bible study time. Oh yes! If you have your Bibles, bless by our head. Father, we thank you again for all that you're doing. We thank you, God, for all you've done. We thank you, God, for all our family. But most of all, we thank you for your darling son, for you gave him to us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And truly, God, we thank you for life this day. Father, even in the midst of bereavement, we thank you for life today. Even in the midst, God, of trials and tribulations, we thank you for life today. God, we thank you for those who have already tuned on. Touch our ears to hear. God, fill our hearts with love in your word. And allow us to fellowship with one another as we come in, in Jesus' name, amen. Did you say amen? All right. If you said it, let's do it. Brother Santiago, God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Brother Charles Brown, cuz up in Philly. Trustee Huey, amen, y'all are in here. We're continuing our Bible study. If you will, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Amen. In verse 3, amen, we're continuing on. I know that, uh, again, by God's grace, we're here. And because of uh, my Father in heaven and my earthly Father, which is now in heaven, amen, we, 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 we're going to run on. Amen. We can't sit down. Amen. Every day is a day that you have that uh, you can't get back. So we got to keep working. We got to keep pushing. Somebody shout, keep pushing. Good morning, uh, Deacon Woody. Love you, man. My friend. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Let's read it together. We can jump in right in it. We jumping right in it. 
Amen. Ready? And let's read. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Yeah. Now notice what it said. If our gospel be hid. Now, for the believer, the gospel is our forefront. It is our uh, main thing. Yes, what we do is based on the gospel. Amen. It's based on the gospel. Now, as we continue today, I want you to know that uh, we're looking at the names of the adversary. Now, that's what the devil job is to try to hide you and to shield you from the gospel, to keep you from growing in the gospel, to keep you from knowing the gospel. Now, notice what it said. I'm going to read this one more time. I want you to read it with me down in verse 3. It said, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Yeah. Y'all know that song, I once was lost, was lost. That means unsaved. That means not concerned about God. That means not uh, concerned about salvation. Amen. I, that, that's, that's what it calls uh, the Bible and Christianity uh, uh, character, characterizes that as being lost. He said the gospel is hid to them that are lost. Yeah, because they're not uh, of seeking godly things. Amen. It's hid to them that are lost. Amen. Now let's go into verse 4, and then it's going to tell us why they're lost. Why they're lost and, and, and who causing all of this problem. Good morning uh, again, Miss Mills, amen, and Miss Edwards and Miss Henderson. Amen. God bless you down in Florida. Good morning, my friend, Brother Rex. Man, God bless you too, man, up in Boston. Bless you, Miss Peggy Surratt. Thank you so much. Now, let's read verse four together. Come on. I need you to get loud and proud. Come on. I, I'm going to be like Jane Brown. Say it loud. Huh? Read it out loud. Come on. Read it with me. Ready? Let's read. In whom, that, that's the lost, the lost, some, somebody works in the lost. See, Jesus' Holy Spirit works in the saved. Let's see who works in the lost, the land of the lost. Let's read verse 4. Read and read. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Hmm. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of, of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Should shine unto them. Now notice what it said. The God of this world. I need you to go back. One, two, three, four. The fourth word in the verse four. I mean, I'm, my question is, does, it, does that word start with a capital G in your Bible or a lowercase g? That's that's my first question today. The fourth word in, 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 in chapter four, second Corinthians chapter four, the fourth word. Does it begin with a capital G or with a lower case letter G? I know some of y'all English teachers out there are smiling at that. Lower case letter. Yes. Thank you so much, man. Yes, sir. We will talk. Thank you for your concern, cuz. Miss Burgess, Brother Brandon, Miss Boyce, glad to make you made our Bible study your choice today. Thank you so much. Yes. It is a lowercase g. Amen. Y'all remember Montel Jordan song, This is How We Do It? He said it was a lowercase g. <laughs> Amen. Now he a big g. See, when you're lost, you're with a lowercase g, which is really no g at all. Because <laughs> there's only one God. And that's why he the big g. He the only one. But because he think he is, and he considers himself and those who uh, are, are dwell with Satan. And see that lowercase g. That, that, that's talking about the devil himself. So, so notice what is that. Now that's another name for the devil. The God of this world. God of, uh, of the worldly thoughts. That's why the Bible tells us, amen, uh, be not conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
I believe that can be found in, the, in uh, Hebrews, amen, chapter 12. Now, notice what it said, because the devil, the God of this world, for people who are not saved or act like they don't want to get it, they think they're right. And when they, they have a made up mind, but their mindset is wrong. That's why they got to be reprogrammed. Somebody shout reprogram. The Bible says transform. Can somebody put out their transform? Amen. And that's why you cannot argue with them. Because the only thing they know is what they know and what they think they know is wrong. But you cannot convince them. Don't you pray for them and try to convince them. But don't debate them. Amen. And talk to them. I remember one time somebody said they wanted to debate me about the Bible. There's nothing to debate. You believe it or you don't. I, we can try to persuade you, but I'm not here to debate you. Amen. My job is to persuade you, to encourage you, to uh, let you know that there's power in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout power in the name of Jesus? Miss Drain, I see you out there all the way in New York. God bless you. Amen. All oh, y'all coming in there. Yes. So again, the, the uh, and 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 my next question is, so um the the God of this world is another name for Satan. Amen. And then my question is, what is another name for Satan that we find in verse four? Amen. I'm looking for the answer. Good morning, Miss Annie Little John. God bless you so much. Thank y'all for studying with us today. Miss Watts. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Now, notice we're going to go down to the, uh, the next part of that verse that said he had blinded their minds. Amen. Can somebody put that out there? Blinded their minds. Amen. The um, scientists or the biologists would say, amen, you see with your eyes. <laughs> huh? But common sense lets us know that your mind can be blinded. In other words, that means you're not seeing good. You're not seeing it God's way. You're seeing it through your eyes. You got you got to look to the world through God's eyes. Hmm? Have you ever seen or heard somebody who got intoxicated and say, man, I got blinded? Hmm? They can see, but the uh, uh, alcohol and drugs mess with your thought pattern. It messes with your your, your conscience. It, 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 it messes with your uh, intellect. Amen. You, amen. It make you think you can outsmart the police. <laughs> huh? Yeah. So that's why it's so important to keep your mind right. Amen. Do, do me a favor. Amen. I know we normally touch ourselves on the shoulder. Touch yourself on the shoulder and say, uh, God loves me. And then touch your mind. So I got to keep my mind right. You got to keep your mind right. Amen. You got to keep your mind right. Amen. We're going to share what's something with you. Turn with me. This is an insert here. Amen. We're going to Hebrews. I do believe it's, it's chapter 8. We're going by memory. And, and if it's not there, we're going to find it. <laughs> yes, we are. But I think it's in chapter 8. Hebrews, bear with me one second. Turn toward chapter 8 and, and we'll, we'll start. Yeah, and what I'm looking for is whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, There be any play. That's Philippians chapter 4. I said Hebrews. Philippians, if you will. I'm sorry. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Thank you, God. And that's why even myself, I have to keep studying. Because, again, uh, as we uh, renew and, 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 and reread and review. Good Lord Almighty. That's a, that's a group of reads right there. Amen. Re renew, review, and reread. Amen. It helps us to... A retain, good Lord Almighty, and remain, hey, in the mind of Christ. He said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. So that type of mind, you got to work on it. Because the worldly way, if you're not careful, it'll just become a part of your life. That's why people that don't pray in the morning, don't go to church, 
don't care about church and just care about life and what they're going to do, having fun, don't care about responsibility, don't care about nobody else, don't care about their future, don't care about nobody else's future. They get caught up in the world and they're on the wide road to destruction. And, and then when trouble come, they don't have nobody to turn to. So what the God of this world would do is tell them to hurt yourself. But that's not God. Let me tell you what type of things God tells us to think about in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Amen. Come on. God bless you. Good morning. Oh, we having a good time. Good morning, Miss Coleman. Amen. Good morning to all of you. Amen. God bless you so very, very much. Amen. Have y'all ever heard somebody say, man, uh, my mind was blinded? How am I blind? Let's read verse 8. Philippians 4 and verse 8. Come on. Read it out loud. Read it out loud now. Come on. Loud as you can. Don't get in trouble now if you're at work. I love you. I care for you. <laughs> Ready? Let's read. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Hmm? Whatsoever things are honest. Yeah. Whatsoever things are just. Hmm. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue. And if there be any praise, think on these things. Huh? Amen. That, that don't sound nothing like what the devil wants you to think about. Sin, destruction, chaos, murder, deceit, lies, envy, blasphemy, pride and foolishness. And I think on that list it said an evil eye. Amen. That, see, that's why you got to make sure, amen, that even though you dressed in your Sunday suit and you have on your wonderful Sunday shoes or your Sunday boots, you got to keep your mind on things above. That's what the Bible said. He said, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely. Lovely things, not, not hateful and evil things. And if you get a, a good report, something good news, good news. Good morning, Brother Vernon. Good morning, Miss Sylvia. Good morning, Brother Bridges. Good morning to Marion. God bless you, man. Good morning, Michelle. God bless you. Good morning, Miss Sims. All the way in M-I, quick letter, quick letter, I, quick letter, quick letter, I, B B I. Mississippi. We'll find that in the book. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. That's why it's so important that we, we have the right people around us so that when our mind gets off track to say, hey, sister, I, I know you're upset right now, but the, 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 we got to do it the God's way. We got to do it the big G way. Amen. We got to do it God's way. Amen. Good morning, Miss Kimberly Curtis. God bless you. I love you. Thank you so much for your prayers and concern. I love you and your family. All right, we're moving on. And I think we've done pretty good here. Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. We get to hit a little bit more there before we roll on. Hope y'all having a good time this morning as we continue our study on the enemy. And that's one thing you got to know. Once you know your enemy, you can better handle your enemy. You can better handle them. And again, um, uh, for competition's sake, we played against, uh, in, in the different sports that I played, amen, we knew who we was playing. Uh, we had to uh, study them. We had something called the scouting report. And they would tell you what they was good at. They would tell you what numbers to watch. Amen. Now, that running back, he, he's fast. Amen. He, he don't try to fake you out. He's going to try to run over you. We, we don't seen three game films on him, and he ain't never tried to fake nobody out. So you be thinking he's going to run over you, but but that game, you got to realize when you play him, he just might try to fake you out. <laughs> See, even though we, we study him, you still got to look for other things. 
And I think, and I'm saying that to you, my brothers and sisters, because Satan has been attacking you one way, but 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 don't think he can attack you another way. Huh? So we got to be aware of what we know and then be prepared for the unexpected. And that's why Bible study is so important. That's why gospel sermons are so important. That's why gospel music is going is, is so important. And so I remember in the 90s, amen, when Kurt Franklin was coming out, they told Franklin, Kurt Franklin, gospel music was going too far. <laughs> But sometime in order to help change somebody's mind, you got to kind of get in their environment. So then you can tell them whatsoever things are true. <laughs> you can't tell. Then you can tell them whatsoever things are honest. Amen. You can't tell them if you're not talking to them whatsoever things are pure. You cannot tell them if you're pushing them away and, cur and looking at them on the curse whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there's any strength and power and love and excitement coming out of what you say, think on that. Good Lord of mine. Huh? I feel like talking in here. He said in verse 4, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, he said that he blind the minds of them that do not believe. That's why we got to pray for the unsaved. And, and if you can, remember to pray for them too. We pray for one another, our sisters and brothers that are saved. Good morning, Miss Smith. Good morning, Brother Barnes. Amen. Thank you so very much. Amen. Today would have been Deacon Lee's birthday. God bless you. Would have been 102. Thank you so much for that, Miss Henderson. That's some good news. Miss Rebecca, God bless you. My friend and brother. Amen. It says here, Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. See, God is invisible. But Jesus, who is his son, is God in the flesh. So he's the image of God. So if you really want to know what God is like as a, as a, as a man or as a human, Jesus. He is God in, in bodily form. Amen. God, the Holy God, the Spirit. God is a spirit. Big G. Two, God, the Son. Amen. Which is his son, Jesus, earthly. And then after he died and rose again, then the Holy Spirit. Amen. The three are one. Can somebody put out there in the comments uh, the three, amen, that make up God? Come on, put it out there. Good morning, Michelle, cousin, Palmer. God bless you, Big William. Love you, man. Love you all so very much. Good morning, Miss Lindsay. Good morning, Brother Dwight Rogers, all the way up in Nashville, Tennessee. Amen. Did we get that? All right. Again, he blinded the minds of them. He, he, well, I'm looking for the answer. What are those three? That make up God, the, the Trinity of God. Amen. The Trinity of God. Amen. The Trinity of God. You won't find the word Trinity in the Bible, but when he was baptized, you, it says a voice from heaven. That's God. That's my beloved son. That's Jesus. And the spirit descended on him like a dove. All three are in that verse when he after he was baptized. Thank you so very much. There you go, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you so much. All right, we're moving on. Y'all are doing good in here. Our next stop today, we're looking at another name. We already got one name for the for our adversary today. The next name we will find in John 8. John chapter 8, verse 44. Thank y'all so very much. Man, y'all are awesome Bible class. Y'all are so, I'm telling you, y'all are so amazing. And, and, and I'm just so thankful to share this morning with you. You are, amen, a part of my strength. You are. You, you are part of my uh, uh, service to God. You are part of my uh, inspiration. And because of you logging on today, I feel like going on. Thank you. And that's what I'm trying to tell my family, my mother, my brothers. Man, we got to go on. Amen. My wife and children, their families. 
we got to go on. His brothers and sisters, fellow church members and friends, amen, it's all right to grieve, but you, we can't sit down and do nothing. Huh? Do you know how many people that are not helped every day because somebody got their lips poked out and saying, I ain't going to do nothing? Yeah, it's the time to take off. It's the time to, to chill out. But but don't you know that how many people can be blessed by your efforts? Huh? See, the devil wants to blind your mind and wants you to think that the work of God has stopped. It hasn't stopped. Amen. And you can't stop. And I pray today that uh, this Bible study will encourage you to every day help somebody. Because it might be your last day. Hmm. Why do you say that? My daddy passed Friday night, Sunday night, and he had plans for Monday morning. Huh? You got to do what you can while you can. Touch yourself on the shoulder. Come on. Touch yourself on the shoulder right now. Touch yourself on the shoulder and say, I got to do what I can while I can. Thank you. I love you. I need you to survive. Amen. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Amen. God bless you. I'm excited about this Bible study. We're learning about our enemy today, especially around this Christmas time. Don't you know that Christmas time is a great time to show love? Yeah. Mm hmm. Hang on, the mistletoe. I want to get to know who you better. This Christmas. Huh? And as we trim the tree, come on, y'all know the words, come on, amen, love, 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 that's what we got to show, amen, it's all right to get presents, but if you get them and don't have love, hmm, there's more to it than in the presents, amen, God bless you, good morning, Miss Sarah Little John, Miss Hardy, God bless you for joining us today, Miss Branton, God bless you. Oh, y'all got all these right answers. Lord have mercy. When we get back, I'm going to have to bring a truckload of candy. Y'all be getting them all right. I get some candy. Now, I can't give it to you when you come in the church. I got to give it to you when you're leaving. No candy in the church. <laughs> Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. We're looking at our enemy here. John chapter 8. Are you there? John chapter 8. Won't you go down? The verse 44. Now, as we look at this, he said he's the God. We looked at the devil as the little G God of the world, for the people of the world. The Bible said, love not the world. Yeah, we got to live in the world, but you can't love worldly stuff. And that's what the devil wants you to do, to get fall in love with worldly stuff. Amen. So we don't fall in love with the stuff. Fall in love with the Savior. Amen. And when we fall in love with the Savior, you'll thank God for your stuff. But your stuff will not be your God. Huh? Is that what I said? Is that what I said? Good morning, Miss Jackie Ellis. Love you too. Amen. Yes, I do. Miss Stewart. All right. Miss Wilkins. I, 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 I see that. It's good morning. Miss Latoya Denise. Good morning. Amen. Here we go. Now we're looking at another name for the enemy. Here we go. Verse 44. Right, loud as you can. Ready and let's read. Amen. Ye are of your father, the devil. Hmm. Yeah. The devil has children too. Yeah. Yeah. God, our father, which are in heaven. And then for those who are lost, and the unsaved, and the Bible said, "Well, who is lost? And they're not, they're not, they're good people. But if they haven't confessed Christ, they lost." Amen. The Bible said, and, "And and if you have not confessed the Lord, over in John, it said, if you don't believe, you condemned already." Yeah, it's a sad thing, but yes, yes. So if they if they have not confessed Him, it could be possible that they lost. That's why we have witnessing to do. That's why we have to have convincing to do. Somebody put that out there. That sounds pretty good. Witnessing and convincing. Yes. You have to witness in a way to convince 
the unbeliever. See, when most people witness, they witness to the person and beat them down. You don't witness and tell them what they're not or what they're not or what they did do or what they're not or what they can't. No, you witness in a way to build them up. Good God Almighty. Somebody ought to say, man, I feel like, oh, catching my note here. Huh? You got to witness to people, amen, to it with love and with compassion. You can't witness them like, oh, you're going to die and go to hell, man, if you don't stop that. No. You say, brother, hey, amen, that stuff could be damaging your internal organs. Therefore, I do recommend that H2O, <laughs> God's natural source of hydration for the body, I recommend you that to quench your thirst. Now, don't, wouldn't that sound better? <laughs> wouldn't that sound better to you if you was in that position? Or somebody walk up to you and just say, Brother, you don't stop drinking that. You're going down there in that hot place. No, you got to witness in a way, again, witnessing that will make it convincing. Yes, with love, with the right words, and sometimes it just not be any words at all. Amen? So make sure you don't beat people down when you're trying to witness. Good Lord Almighty. You might treat me bad. You might call me names and try to embarrass me in a crowd, but I'm going to call you my brother and sister and just say, I'm going to pray for you. I'm not going to get into no argument and see who can say the most words that will get bleeped out if it was on TV. See, the devil will blind your mind and think you winning an argument. <laughs> and the only thing you're doing is making yourself look crazy. Huh? How are we just talking about convincing? Good Lord. Let's read this thing. Amen. So the lust of your father, ye will do. Yeah. The lust of the world. Yeah. The lust of your father, you will do. The, the children of God have the desires of God. So that's why we have the fruit of the spirit. And if any of you missed that Sunday, you have to go back and listen to that sermon Sunday. It talks about the fruit of the spirit becomes from the father God. He gives us that. That's what we do. It's a part of us because we are part of his tree. Amen. The Holy Spirit rises like sap in a tree and causes the growth to happen out on the limb. Hmm? That's how the Holy Spirit works in the life of a believer, but also in the life of the unbeliever. Amen. The evil thoughts. Good Lord Almighty, rise up in the evil mind that's been blinded and become evil words and evil actions, even to family. Good Lord Almighty. And friends, if you get too mad and don't think, you're putting a hole in your own boat and you will see. Huh? Did y'all hear me now? It calls the first two brothers of human existence. Call one to kill the other. Only two brothers. Didn't have nothing to fight. They couldn't fuss about, about no school clothes. There wasn't no school. Couldn't fuss about fussing about no Aunt Jordans or who wrecked the car. Didn't have no car. All they had was family and God. And got mad because one of them was serving God. Even then, it tells you that Cain had a worldly mind. Got mad because his brother gave his best to God. Good morning, Sarah Little John. Good morning, my friend Janice Petty. God bless you so very much. Good to see you with us today. Oh, man, I'm excited about what God is doing. Now, let's go into that second uh, 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 that second sentence in, in, in John chapter 8, verse 44. I mean, now, this, here come the next name. We always, well, this. Uh, 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 next name, we're going to begin with he was. Amen. Here we go. Ready? Let's read. We're going to stop at the next period. As my friend uh, Red Fox would say on Seven and Son, period. Amen. Let's read. He was a murderer from the beginning. Amen. We're going to pause right there at that comma. That's what a comma means. 
I know we got some English teachers out there watching. I want to be politically and grammarly correct. Now notice what. So the next thing is, what was the devil from the beginning? And that's another name for him. Amen. I'm looking for the answer. I'm going to give you an in memory of, I think his name was Pat Sajak from Jeopardy, who recently went home to be with the Lord. Hey Amen. You can make your own Jeopardy music right now in silence. Huh? I'm looking for the answer before I move on. I told y'all I got a little delay over here. He was a what from the beginning? The devil, the little G, the father of the devil, the devil himself, the father of people with lust, with evil lust. He was a what from the beginning? Come on, I'm looking for it. For those who looking at Matthew 4, come on, I know y'all, is it coming up on y'all's over there? Nobody come up with it? He was a, there you go, thank you, Brother Bonner, the first one popped up on my screen. It said he was a murderer. So that's the next name for the devil. He's a murderer. Amen. Murder, she wrong. Murder, she wrong. Murder, she wrong. Y'all remember that? Someone please call 911. Y'all remember that? Why Claire? And Mary Jane. Huh? <laughs> Amen. That's the sign of the devil, murder. And it's not always murder of the body. It could be murder of your character. It could be murder of your integrity. Harsh words to keep you from getting a job when you qualify. You don't hear me? Lies being spread on you. Just because they don't want you to climb the ladder. Lord, I tell y'all, y'all, we got work to do. Every murderer, amen, don't have a gun or a knife or have drugs that they give you to kill you. Some of them kill you with legislation. Good Lord Almighty, I hate to say it, but that's what it is. That's what we're talking about today, even in America. We're still talking about social injustice. With companies, with corporations, even with, with small towns and big towns, big cities, small states, large states, regions of the country. Amen. This stuff has got the end. It's got the end. But an evil mindset will always fight against peace and progress. And as you look at your political calendar, and I don't like to get political. But the Bible said you are known by the fruit. I told y'all y'all need to see last week's sermon now. Tell your neighbors and friends they got to see it because you, you will not always see them with a gun in their hand. But they will try to kill you and your family with rules, with lack of rules, because that's what's killing a lot of people now. All over the country. All Economic backgrounds in all parts of the city. Huh? The high rent district and, 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 the, and the district where there's no rent at all, where they stand in shanty towns and under bridges. They dying too. Because of lack of rules. Well, somebody said, well, they didn't do nothing about it. Sometimes not doing nothing about it is, 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 is murder. Do you see how many people have died? Almost getting close to 300,000. Lord have mercy. We got some work to do in America. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. We got to pray. We got to pray. I'm going to ask you a question. You don't have to put your name out there if you don't want to. But if you have, you can just say me. I, 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 this is just a little survey. Just, just, this is just us on Bible study. And if you don't want to come in, that's all right. You can come in right there where you are. God hears you. But have you or your family... Or one of your close friends had COVID-19? That's all I'm going to ask. You can just put yes out there. Amen. We got work to do. Because he's blinded their minds and, and making people think that it's not real. But you tell that to the person when they come home and that chair empty for the rest of their days on earth. Hmm? We got work to do. It's bigger than political party, my friend. Yeah, it's about humanity. And once people who say they love Christ 
and still operate against Christ's rules of helping your brother and sister. Whether they're from Samaria, Galilee, or Judea, <laughs> or the uttermost parts of the world, hmm, we got more work to do. And that's why we're on Bible study today. We're here today because we might be gone tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, know what he said here. He said he was a murderer from the beginning. Hmm. And he abode not in the truth. Amen. That's another characteristic of the devil. Amen. He, he always tell a lie. Oh, that remind me of some few people. I saw a, a documentary. Amen. I see you put that. Sorry to hear that, Miss Hicks. Yes, sir. Bishop Wilkins with the glory, with the COVID. Yes. All of us have. My father had the COVID, but he didn't die from the COVID. Amen. Amen. He left here uh, uh, Sunday on the evening train. Lord of If he would have waited the morning, the Monday morning, the morning train might have been too late. Oh, Lord. He went home on the evening train. Clarence Gilliam, God bless you. I see y'all out there. Miss McDowell, God bless you. Yes, yes. It's an impact a lot of our families. And notice what it said. He'll stick with a lie. He'll when you when you abide in something, you're in it. The Bible said that he uh, he abode not in the truth. And when you when you when you when you uh, when you abide, Amen. That's where you live in it. And I'm just gonna say you make your own decisions <laughs> about what you think. Hmm. And I, I, I well, so much I want to say. But you think about it. Avoiding the truth. Good Lord of money. That's the devil's way. That's all I'm saying. I'm not calling nobody a devil. I'm just saying that's the devil's way. Amen. I hope y'all don't do me like they did. Uh, uh, my friend the other week, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, sometimes people twist what you say. No, I didn't, I didn't call him a devil. I didn't call her a devil. I just said that's the devilish way my friend miss keisha god bless you what a mess yeah good lord of mine for your relatives god bless you brother rex didn't know that man from the COVID. god bless you and your families out there so we all are going through this thing and and still don't have any re major restrictions in place lord of mine we got work to do we got work to do. Amen. Let's finish this thing here. Now notice what it said. Let's begin with when. You see that? That third sentence in verse 44. Amen. Say when. When. I mean when. Amen. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Let's read. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Hmm. Yeah. Not, don't consider advice. Don't consider counsel. <laughs> Don't come to updated meetings. Don't come to briefings. Uh, Don't meet with people that's trying to make it better. Lord have mercy. Don't that sound interesting? Yeah, for he is a liar and the father of it. He's talking about the devil. I ain't calling nobody a devil, but people who do that are devilish. <laughs> We got to roll on. So my next thing is, in verse 44, what is the name of our adversary? Or what is he? Or some characteristics that you find in verse 44. Amen. I want you to look at that. Amen. God bless you. Yeah, I'm good, Miss Humphreys. I'm good. Amen. As long as God on the throne, I'm good. Thank you for being concerned about me. Thank you so much. Miss Foster, Kenny Bond, all it, man, yes. We're going to pray for, for you, too, before we leave here. Before we leave here, we're going to pray. Amen. Our next stop, we're looking at our enemy, Matthew 12. Amen. Matthew 12. Can you flip over there? I'm still looking for a, a recap on verse 44. For somebody, I, I can't see it yet on my screen. Amen. What uh, were names of our adversary in John 4, verse 44? Um, excuse me. John 8. 
verse 44, amen, and what are the, some of the characteristics it tells us about the adversary, amen. That's why you got to, again, for those who missed the Sunday, you got to hear this sermon, you got to watch it, you got to, uh, hope it'll be a blessing to you about, amen, the Christian tree. What we just read about in, 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 in John 8 and 44 is, is the devilish tree. Somebody say amen. Yeah, that is a tree. Good Lord of mine. It's called a corrupt tree will bring forth corrupt fruit. A good tree will bring forth good fruit. For a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Neither can a good tree bring forth corrupt fruit. Good Lord of mine. I told you you can tell them by the fruit. Amen. Y'all have got it going on. Yeah, thank you so very much, Miss Julie. Good morning, Miss Cynthia. We love you too. Thank you so much. Yeah. Y'all getting it. Y'all getting there. Thank you so much. Y'all getting it there. Amen. Matthew 12. Here we go. Here we go. Matthew 12. Oh, yeah. That's another name we got here for him. Verse 24, if you found this, say glory. Glory. Now, I think we went over this before. Let's read it out loud. Ready? Let's read. But when the Pharisees heard it, hmm, they said, this fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil. Amen. Now, I want you to highlight verse 24. This is another name for the devil himself. If we got two of them, and it tells you exactly what it means right behind it. Beelzebub. Amen. That's what it says. Now, as we look at this, we want you to understand that, that Baal was a false prophet, was a false god, an idol god that was served and worshipped, amen, in the Old Testament times. Amen. And when the, the Pharisees, who uh, were supposed to uh, be followers of God, and uh, those who, uh, they believed in the resurrection, amen, and they believed in the spirit, but they did not believe Jesus was the resurrection. Good Lord. Well, that's some, that's some, that's some, that's some, I'm telling you. See, they was in church, but they still had their minds blinded. And that's what we got to make sure. Somebody said we got to make sure. That's why Pastor Bridges is here today. We got to make sure that we're putting the word out. Don't let the devil blind your mind. He don't care about your eyes because if he got your mind, your eyes going to be on what's in your mind. Good Lord, my. Was that all right? Hmm. Was that all right? Yes. You got to make sure, even, even that's why in the church, we even have to make sure we study the Bible. It's all right to have other books to complement the Bible and help us understand some of the, of the uh, principles and the words and what they mean and the origin of them. All that's good. Amen. But, but nothing takes the place of your Bible. Those other books enhance your Bible, but don't let them take the place of your Bible. Amen. The mask squad said Sunday, keep your sword in your hand. Huh? <laughs> yeah, your Bible, you got to have it. Now, notice what it said in verse 24. So I'm looking for the words out there. What is the name of the devil that we find in Matthew 12 and 24? Good morning, Miss Ellis. Yes, y'all are getting it. Yeah, Beelzebub. Beelzebub. Some, some have it Beelzebub. But Beelzebul, the prince of the demons. That's, yeah. That's what he called. The prince of the devils. So that's another name for the devil. The prince of the devils. Now notice what it says, the prince of the devils. Notice that Jesus is called the prince of peace. I told you he wanted to be like Jesus. He wanted to be like Jesus. Jesus is the Christ. The devil is the anti-Christ. He's the complete opposite. So if, if, if Jesus is, is the 
I would sing that song even around Christmas. Oh, come all your faithful. Oh, come and behold him. Born the king of angels. Lord of Huh? Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Yeah. He was born the king of angels. This says the devil is the prince of the demon. Good Lord Almighty. He the prince of the fallen angels. Good Lord Almighty. There is a difference somewhere in how can a church person say that God is getting it, Jesus getting his power from the devil. No, Jesus get his power from the Holy Ghost. And that's why you got to be careful because that's blasphemy all the spirit that you're giving the devil credit for God's word. <laughs> oh, Lord, that's what it is. Huh? That's why it's so important for us to, to study these words and help our neighbors and friends. Study these words. And even help your enemy. God bless you, Brother Terry. Right. God bless you. I love you, man. Good morning, Tiffany. Miss Pernice. God bless you. I love all of you. And that's why we're here today, because you give me strength. If I would have been sitting at home somewhere looking at the wall, good Lord Almighty. Hmm? But you are. Thank you for helping me. For helping our church, for helping our brothers and sisters. You you are so important. Amen. And I won't let the devil blind my mind and tell me don't have Bible study. <laughs> huh? In Gaffney, surrounding areas, Ohio, Tennessee, Boston, Florida. All y'all on here right now. Lord have mercy. If we wouldn't have logged on. We wouldn't have had this lovely time together. Hmm? I'll rest after a while. I'll be all right. But you are giving me strength. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. We're going to end right there today. Amen. We're going to end right there. And I pray, my brothers and sisters, that something has been said to let you know that God needs us. Even with tears in our eyes, he needs us. Even with pain in your body, he needs you to witness. In times of jubilation, he needs you. And I understand that my daddy taught me, if you can help somebody, help them. That's why we here. I can help you if I wouldn't log on this month. But you know the Bridges family love you. And God needs you to get busy. Amen. I don't know. I hope you live another 40 and 50 years. But I don't know. But you got to get busy. Good fruit from a good tree. God bless you. We had a few prayers coming in. We thank you so much. We're praying for the Bruton family. Amen. Um, it says here that Brother Patrick Bruton, I believe uh, Rooker uh, Bruton went to glory. I just said Bruton. We're going to pray, pray much for her and her family. She's one of my classmates. And I heard that um, her husband passed. Lord have mercy. Miss Alma Surratt, our funeral will be at 1 o'clock. About to head there now. 
People don't, 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 don't. I, it, it's all right. Some people say you pack your schedule. That's the only way you're going to help some people sometimes. Pack it if you need to pack your schedule. Don't do one or two things a day. Do what you can while you can. Then that way, when you get to where you can't, you can you won't be saying, I wish I would have. Huh? I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. God will restore you as you restore others. He said, give, you have freely, re you have freely received, freely give. You got to give. That's not always money. That's what the world is so messed up on. They think it's always, it's not always money. Sometimes it's a message. Huh? Sometimes it's a moment of encouragement. Sometimes it's some good advice. Hmm? I'm just telling you what I'm telling you. Pray for the Ross family again. His uh, brother Preston Ross and brother James Ross sister, Miss Dr. May, uh, uh, um, went to glory. Amen. Amen. So Miss Ross, I think, says Smokey. Amen. We're gonna keep them in our prayers. We love you so very much. And remember, Amen. Again, Miss Martha Jean. Uh, again, uh, having some difficult days. And again, remember my family. Again, thank you so much to all of you. We love you from my mother, my brothers, our families, Concord Baptist Church, Dick of the Mountain, all of you who have been calling. And please know if we haven't returned your call or text, it's not that uh, we uh, we just want you to know we, we are blessed by all the love we receive. But we're trying to return each and every one of them. But by the time we get to the list, some of them have already done gone off the law. So please know that. And I'll tell others that we love them. God bless you. Amen. Y'all ready to pray? Yeah, I am too. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for all you've done through this day. Father, that you are in complete control. Father, even though when it don't feel like it, you're in control. Sometimes, Father, it doesn't look like it, but you're in control. And Father, sometimes even when uh, it seems like life is tossing and turning us and, and, and causing us to go in curves on two wheels, you're still in control. Keep us, oh Father, uh, from seen and unseen danger. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into the path, O oh God, of the murderer. Lead us not into the path of the little G that try to blind our mind. Lead us not into the path of Beelzebub, the prince of the demons. But lead us beside the still waters so that we can be nourished uh, by you, O oh God. And continue to do your will. We pray for these families. The Surratt family. The Bruton family. Oh God the Ross family. And God this week. The Bridges family. We need you. We need you. God we pray now for COVID. Uh, victims. God, those who are battling it right now. Even in Gaffney. 58 new cases. Just a day ago. Help them, Lord. Help them not spread it to other family members and friends. God, we pray for bereaved families who are, are still battling. God, with moving on from it. And God, we pray now that you will help them to know that you'll walk with them every step of the way. And Father, I pray for everyone who listened today. I pray that you will bless them so that they will know because they are here locked on right now or that will watch this service later, that they will know what a mighty God we serve. God, we thank you. I was moved to this day. Shine through us so that the gospel can shine on the minds of them that don't believe that they can be convinced and converted and complete in you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Let everybody say amen. Everybody say hey. Come on. Amen. Everybody say amen. 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 See you soon. See you Sunday. Amen. Daddy services will be Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Frederick Memorial Gardens, Gaffney, South Carolina. Thank you so much for keeping us in your thoughts and prayers. For those who may be able to attend, bring your mask. Amen. And we're going to have a blast. In Jesus' name, amen.